morning the same thing. Rush, rush, rush. Get up at seven and make the breakfast. Do the dishes. Make the beds. Dust the house. Do the laundry. Do the ironing. John, why can't I have a maid? John. Mm. John Bickerson, how can you fall asleep at the breakfast table? It ain't easy with all that talking going on. Yeah. Wake me in five minutes, Blanche. You had 13 hours sleep last night and you snored worse than ever. Now you sit up there and eat breakfast. I don't want any more. You haven't even touched your cereal. What cereal? You mean this green stuff is cereal? Of course it is, silly. Steveled oatmeal. I got the recipe from my mother. Looks like your mother, all right. <laughs> Never mind the wisecracks, John. Now you stop wasting good food. There's nothing wrong with deviled oatmeal. I squashed in a whole avocado and three bunches of green onions. It's good for your blood. <laughs> I'd rather have a transfusion. Look, I don't want it, Blanche. Just get me some orange juice. I, I didn't squeeze any orange juice. The electric juicer doesn't work. Swept everything under the icebox. <laughs> Some maid. Anyway, how long was she with us? She was never with us. She was against us from the start. <laughs> Where's the little glass squeezer? Oh, it's in the icebox. Don't use it. I'm using it for a jello mold. <laughs> I'm satisfied with it. You're satisfied with everything. Just lost your ambition, that's all. Whatever happened to your get up and go? It got up and went. <laughs> Very funny. I can just hear Louise Shaw's husband talking like that. Louise Shaw's husband is a package thief. He is not. Why, Louise Shaw's husband bought her a brand new convertible last week. Good. And Elsie Bach is on her third mate. Well, she can afford it. Our hun's a butcher. Well, why aren't you a butcher? What butcher? You just didn't have brains enough to see the beef boom coming. Now, look, Blanche, I don't know what you've got on your mind this morning, but I haven't got time for it. Well, I'm sick and tired of going around dressed like an old frump. I don't care where I go, John. All the women point at me and say, there goes Dickerson's wife. Just look how she's dressed. For heaven's sakes, look how I'm dressed and I'm Dickerson. <laughs> Get about me, coach, Blanche. We can't afford it. Where's my hat? Wait a minute. Where are you going in such a rush? You're on a week's vacation, aren't you? Well, it was such a nice day, I thought I might go downtown and try and sneak into the ball game. Never mind the ball game talk. I know what you're thinking of. And anyway, you have an appointment this afternoon with Dr. Hersey. Oh, must I go again, Blanche? Nobody can cure snoring. That man's a witch doctor. Did you see what he did to Barney? He cured his sinus. He shrunk his head. <laughs> <laughs> Just got a close haircut, that's all. Now, look, John, you'll be there at 2 o'clock. Oh, and on the way down, you can drop off the electric orange juicer to be fixed. I'll fix it myself. Where are the tools? Oh, they're in the, uh, they're in the laundry hamper. But don't worry over the tub. I'm giving the goldfish a bath. Goldfish a bath? <laughs> Hello, Miss Bickerson. Here's your fur coat. I put a new label in. A new... Keep your voice down. My husband's still here. Oh. Well, I'll bring it back later. Oh, no, no, please, Mr. Hooker. I, I can't keep it. You'll have to give me my money back. Money back? Yeah. I already changed the label and dyed the collar. I I'm sorry. I, I can't help it. You'll have to give me the money back, please. Why? Oh, just a minute, John. Look, Mr. Hooker. 
take the money over to Barney's house and leave it there. I'll do business with you some other time. Show me the money. Oh. Who's that at the door, Blanche? Oh, uh, some man had the wrong apartment. Uh, what about the orange juice? I fixed it. How could you fix it? It needed a new motor. I hooked it up to the vacuum cleaner. Oh. <laughs> Does it work? It works fine, except it sucks up the juice and spits the pits in your face. <laughs> Where are you going? Oh, uh, I, I have to go to uh, see Clara about something. Now, look, while I'm gone, you stay out of mischief, and don't you dare go near that Murphy's Barn Grill. Now, what was that for, Blanche? I wasn't even thinking of Murphy's Barn Grill. Uh, all right, dear. I'll pick you up later, Dr. Hersey, okay? Okay. Oh, uh, is there any gas in the car? Yeah, I put in a fifth last night. Why? I mean, five gallons. <laughs> Bye, dear. Bye. Eating for a minute, would you? <laughs> Hiya, sis. Did Mr. Hooker get here? Mr. Hooker? Barney's friend, the furrier. I told him to leave the money here. What money? The money I paid him for the fur coat. I can't keep it. Did he leave it? He was here, but he didn't leave any money. He didn't? What did he leave? He left down. Oh, Barney. Now, don't get excited, Blanche. We've got the coat here. But I don't want the coat. I can't afford to keep it. Barney, you gotta get that money back. It's John's insurance money. I wouldn't worry about that. He's got a lot of years yet. Oh. Give me some more of these goat trips, Claire. Honest, I don't know what to do with him. He eats like he was condemned. <laughs> Barney, you had no right to recommend that Mr. Hooker to me. What are you worrying about? He's honest. You get your money when he when he gets back from Las Vegas. Las Vegas? Yeah. Why didn't you get it before he left? He's your friend. And he's an old friend of mine. That thief ducked out without giving me my commission. <laughs> oh, Claire, I wish you hadn't talked me into buying that coat. Now, Blanche, it's a good buy and it looks lovely on you. I think it'll even fit me. I don't know. I feel awfully guilty about, about spending John's insurance money. After all you've done for that man, you deserve a new coat. Besides, I don't believe in life insurance for a husband. It uh, gives you too much to hope for. <laughs> Stop being a philosopher and help me figure out a way to get that money back. Pass it over to Vegas, Fire. <laughs> the best way is to ask John for it. He hasn't got it. He'll get it. There's always money for an emergency. What emergency? Barney, go into your den. I want to talk to Blanche alone. And take your food with you. Secrets. Every time they got secrets, I have to go sit in my den. <laughs> it's very simple, Blanche. John's so soft-hearted, just tell him that our sister Hardy's going to have a baby and you have to be with her. But I don't want to go all the way to Idaho. You don't go to Idaho. You get the fare and expenses for John and come spend a few days with us. Oh, no, Clara. No, I couldn't do that. I've never lied to John before. Oh, stop it. Where's John? I don't know. But I'm supposed to meet him at Dr. Hersey's office at 2 o'clock. Good. I'll call you there and make it sound very urgent. Now, you run along and get your bags all packed. Oh, Clara, oh, I'm go afraid on. that this is it. I have to go out and get something for Barney's lunch. <laughs> Barney, where are you? I'm in my den where you told me to go. Well, come on out now. I want to take a shower. <laughs> no reaction. <laughs> well, let's try another. Well, let's see. That's it. Take him in, 
Lisa Ursus is allergic to fur. Mm. All right, pick him up, Miss Pryor. Mm. Mr. Bickerson, wake up. Wake up. What's the matter, Blanche? What's the matter? It's all right, John. You're still here. That sedative will wear off in a few minutes. That's all, Miss Pryor. What happened? What did you do to my arm? I've just isolated the cause of your snoring. You have a perfect tolerance to creosote, no reaction to chicken fat, the cracker dust test was negative, and you can drink all the reindeer milk you like, but <laughs> you'll have to avoid fur in any form. Fur? I've been avoiding that other stuff, too. Well, I'm going to give you some medicine to relieve that condition in the meantime. You can get rest now. Okay. Oh, hello, Mrs. Bickerson. Hello, Doctor. There's our patient. Took it like a little soldier. <laughs> what did he do to you, John? Found out what made me snore. See? Didn't I tell you? He's a wonderful doctor, and you always <laughs> sneered at him. What do you say's wrong? I'm allergic to fur. We can't have any fur in the house. Does that mean that I can never have a fur coat? I guess not, unless you want to put up with my snoring. And you got to get rid of the cat, too. Get rid of nature, boy? <laughs> never. I'm going to keep the cat, keep the coat, and you can keep your snoring. Then why did you make me come here? After all, that guy is a phony. Scratches my arm, fills me full of cracker dust and creosote. The chiseler's going to charge me ten dollars. Five dollars. All right, five dollars. Well, I... <laughs> well, money doesn't grow on trees, you know. Neither does medicine. Here. See? Now you made an enemy out of him. <laughs> How do I know what's his stuff? He's liable to kill me. Oh, don't be silly. He's too much of a businessman. Besides, you still haven't paid him for my tonsils, and I promised him Barney's liver. Now you go in there and get dressed. <laughs> Mrs. Bickerson, there's a telephone call for you. You can take it right here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Oh, oh, Clara. Oh, no. No, when? Oh, of course I'll go. Yes. Yes, dear, I'll tell John. All right. Goodbye. John? That was Clara. She just got a wire from Horty. Horty? Who's Horty? My sister Horty in Idaho. She's going to have a baby. Oh. <laughs> I wonder what's in this stuff, Blanche. John, did you hear what I said? My sister Horty's going to have a baby any minute, and I simply must go there. Why do you have to go? I wouldn't dream of letting her have a baby without me. She's had 15 babies without you. Oh. Now look, John, Horty needs me, and, and you just have to let me have the money to get there. Well, let her husband send you the money. He can't. He isn't doing anything. He's doing plenty. <laughs> I haven't got any money to send you to Idaho. Don't be selfish, John. There's plenty of money in the sugar bowl. That's my insurance money. You see? Wait a minute. You know I had my life insured for $10,000. You're always thinking of yourself. Thinking of myself? If I die, you get the $10,000. You know perfectly well you have no intention of dying. <laughs> you only had your life insured to tantalize me. I'll drop dead in the morning. <laughs> Say it, but you won't do it. Blanche, what's the matter with you? Well, I'm so upset about Horty, I don't know what I'm saying. John, you just have to let me have that money. Okay, I'll finish dressing and we go home and get it. Oh, no, no, no. No, I'll, I'll, I'll rush home and get it and, and go right down to the train. Don't you want me to take you to the station? No, no, I'll manage, dear. Now, look, while I'm gone, you be sure and keep the house clean and, and uh, uh, feed the animals regularly. Don't worry. Uh, uh, take good care of Nature Boy. Who's Nature Boy? The cat. He's to have a teaspoonful of catnip every day. Where do I buy catnip? Oh, there's some in the kitchen. You know, in that big white box up in the right-hand cupboard. Big white box? Is that catnip? Uh-huh. I've been eating it every morning for breakfast. I thought it was cereal. <laughs> Why do you keep it in a white box, in a cereal box? It's not going to hurt you, dear. Now I have to rush. Goodbye. Cat food for breakfast? That's the kind of a dog's life I lead. <laughs> Three days cooking for a canary and he won't eat it. Come on. 
were a sparrow, you'd be glad to get this. Mr. <laughs> hey, Bickerton! Who's that? It's your grocery! Bring him in here. The front door was open. I know, I'm airing out the living room. <laughs> Miss Bickerson away? Yeah, she's in Idaho. Her sister's having a baby. Oh. Got all the groceries I ordered? Yeah, I think so. There's uh, 20 ginger ale, 20 club sodas, <laughs> eight limes, a bottle of bitters, and uh, <laughs> uh, a jar of olives, and three eggs. Oh. Set them down there, will you? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you like my wife to clean up for you while Mrs. Bickerson's away? I'll manage. Well, for a couple of dollars, she can clean up that big pile of dirty laundry there in the other room. That's my bed. <laughs> hey, is that stuff burning, Mr. Pickerson? I don't know. It smelled that way before I put the light on. <laughs> well, uh, what is it? It's beef stew. Well, is it supposed to be that color? Blue like that? I don't know. I never made it before. Would you like to try some? Oh, no. No, no, thanks. Uh, Got to get back to the store. Well, uh, eat hearty, Mr. Bickerson. I'm starving, but I can't take a chance on this. <laughs> Wish he'd have tried it. Nature boy. <laughs> Come on. We'll soon find out how good it is. <clears throat> Go on, eat it. Eat it. <laughs> Don't bury it in your sandbox. <laughs> I guess I go hungry again. Oh, I'm in bad shape. I must be in bad shape. I'm beginning to wish my wife was home. Hiya, Clara. How was the movie? No good. Barney sing it over. Wish I hadn't gone. I never would have gone if you hadn't been here to watch the kids. I thought I was doing you a favor. Here's Barney's shirts. Why did you starch the collars? Barney hates starch. Well, he eats enough of it. <laughs> well, that's for his arthritis. Did little Ernie get his bottle? Yeah. What about George? Did you give him a bath? No. Look, Clara, I don't see why a 14-year-old kid can't bathe himself. <laughs> He's very delicate. He's bigger than Barney. <laughs> well, how big is that? It wouldn't hurt you to give him a bath. I didn't come here to play nursemaid to your kids. What's the matter with you, Blanche? You've been on edge for two days. Well, I'm worried. Suppose John finds out. Fine picture you took me to. It was even worse the second time. <laughs> I'm going to hit the hay. You got a snack? I roasted a whole turkey for your dinner. Barney can't sleep on an empty stomach. It gives him heartburn. Oh, I just want something light. Can you whip up some rabbit stew? What are you looking at me for? I'm not married to you. There's your wife. Isn't he something? He's something, all right. What are you making such a fuss about? Are one of you two going to make it, or do I have to go to bed hungry? I don't care if you never go to bed at all. Blast. Well, I'm fed up with the whole thing. Barney engineered the deal for the cook, and you made me lie to my husband. I didn't make you steal the insurance money. I didn't steal it. I borrowed it. And I never would have done that if it hadn't been for you, Barney. That's the thanks you get for being nice to your in-laws. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. Well, take your bed with you. <laughs> Now, don't get mad at Barney Butch. After all, he's done everything possible to make you comfortable here. Comfortable? Why, you've been using me for a nursemaid, housemaid, and laundress. And on top of it all, you're charging me rent. <laughs> My rent is going to take the consequences. 
You make it sound like I'm getting some gain out of it. After all, who's going to get the pleasure of the mink coat? You or me? I am. So if you don't mind, will you please take it off and let me get out of here? <laughs> driver's waiting. Take me to Murphy's Bar and Grill. John, wake up. It's me, Blanche. What's the matter, Blanche? What's the matter? Get up and pay the cab driver two and a half dollars. What are you doing, home? Why didn't you wire me? Never mind that now. Two and a half dollars. It's two and a half. Keep the change. a week. Haven't you anything to say to me? Put out the lights. Is that the way you're going to greet me, John? No hug, no kiss? I kissed you before you left, didn't I? You didn't even ask me how I enjoyed my trip. I'm sorry. You knew very well that my sister was going to have a baby. The least you could do is ask how she is. Go on, ask how she is. How is she? What do you care? I don't know. I was just trying to be polite. I just hate to think of what you've done to this place since I've been gone. Suppose you left a whole mess of dirty dishes in the sink. No dishes. Were the animals fed regularly? Every day. Did you put fresh sand in the cat's bed? Mmm. The water in the goldfish bowl should have been changed on Sunday. I changed it. I cleaned up everything. How's the canary? I don't know. I haven't seen him since I vacuumed his cage. John! Oh, don't blow your top. The canary's fine. Where's Nature Boy? Who's Nature Boy? The cat. Is he inside sleeping? No, he's outside fencing. <laughs> we should stop hopping on those animals. Wait a minute. What was that? What was what? John, there's a mouse in the room. Cats, dogs, mice. There's no mouse in the room. I swear I heard a mouse squeak. What do you want me to do? Get up and oil it? <laughs> What's the matter with you, Blanche? Why are you acting so nervous? Well, it's your fault. Instead of being sweet and nice to me when I come home from a trip, you just bark at me. I only want a little word of affection. Oh, dear. Aren't you sorry you married me? Just a little bit? I'm not sorry, just a little bit. You're sorry a whole lot. I'm not sorry at all, Blanche, darling. You love me still? I don't know. I never saw you that way. <laughs> Please put out the lights and let me get some sleep. Guess I'll have to get some groceries tomorrow. Are there any eggs for breakfast? No. Then you'll have to eat out. I don't care. I've been doing it all week. Well, don't blame me. I worked for three hours before I left, baking you a lovely rhubarb pie. Bet you didn't even touch it. It didn't look good. What was the matter with it? Who ever heard of a pie two feet long? Well, I couldn't get any shorter rhubarb. <laughs> anyway, why you didn't eat home left you enough food for a whole week. Mm. And I baked a whole bathtub full of rice. What happened to it? I took a bath in it. I can just hear you saying that to Gloria Gooseby. Now, don't start with Gloria Gooseby. Believe me, if you were married to her, she'd make it plenty tough for you. I'm not married to her. She makes it easy for me. What? I mean, I hate Gloria Gooseby. 
And the next time I see her husband, Leo, I'm going to punch him right in the nose. What have you got against Leo? Why, he's a better husband than you are. Well, I'm sick of hearing that, too. Leo Gooseby is a cheap, chiseling bum. He is not. He's more generous than you are. Generous? Yes. Would Leo Gooseby give you a new dress? No. Would he give you a new hat? No. Would Leo give you a mink coat? No. Would you give me a mink coat? No. Why should I give you anything Leo wouldn't give you? <laughs> Let's stop this wrangling and go to sleep. Get up, John. You'll be sorry when I'm gone. Where are you going? Nobody knows how sick I am or how I suffer. Well, you won't have to listen to it much longer. Now, look here, Blanche. You've done something wrong. I know you have. I can recognize the signs. What? Is... Well, first, give me a kiss and, and then I'll tell you. Tell me now and I'll kiss you later. Maybe you won't feel like kissing me later. I don't feel like kissing you now. What have you done, Blanche? Sit up, John. I bought a mink coat. A mink coat? How much was it? Lie down, John. <laughs> How dare you go out and spend money on a mink coat? We can't afford a mink coat. Well, don't scream at me. I deny myself everything. I've been cutting down your old girdles and wearing them for suspenders. <laughs> I, I, I sew collars on my underwear to save on shirts. I never spend a penny on myself, and she has to have a mink coat. You had your shoe shine last Friday. I haven't got any shoes. I had my feet painted black. <laughs> I'm sorry, John. Please forgive me. I didn't want to go through with it. It was all Clara's idea. What are you talking about? Well, I, I didn't go to Idaho. And my sister didn't have a baby. I, I went to stay with Clara and Barney. Please forgive me, John. Oh, Blanche, how can you do these things? Why didn't you tell me the truth in the beginning? I don't care about the money. I know you don't. I'll get rid of the coat. I'll sell it. Love to let you keep it, but you know what Dr. Hersey said about fur? I'm allergic to it. That's what makes me snore. I wonder who that is. I don't know. It's almost 3 o'clock in the morning. Probably one of the neighbors coming to complain. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll complain them. Wait a minute. I'm coming. What's the idea? Quick. Yeah. Dr. Hersey, what's the matter? I've made a ghastly mistake. Miss what? What? What mistake? How do you feel? I feel fine, except I'd like to sleep. Oh, that's one of the prime symptoms. Lethargica profundus. What? I gave you the wrong medicine. Wrong medicine? How much of it have you taken? Just a jigger. <laughs> What's in it? Midriatic alkaloid. It's entirely incompatible with your condition. A large dose can be fatal. Fatal? Yes. You're not allergic to fur at all. Did you hear that, John? I can keep the mink coat. What's the matter with you, Blanche? I'm dying and you're wearing meat to my funeral. <laughs> Here, well, take this. It's an antidote. I won't touch it. I begged you not to let him fool around with me. Him and his snoring cures. You know he can't do... Oh. <laughs> There, you'll be all right in a minute. Now, don't fight it. Just relax. What did you let him give me that stuff for? I don't know what's... Oh. Oh, Dr. Hersey, he... He's all right. Sleeping, that's all. Kevin, that worked. You'll notice he stopped snoring. Looks like he stopped breathing. No, no, he's breathing all right. Very quietly, but with complete regularity. If you'll just lean close, you'll hear him. Good night, Mrs. Vickers. Good night, Dr. Hersey. 